guys. Um, so it's Miss B and Professor Woodruff, and we're here to show you how to take vital signs. Um, so vital signs, you know, um, a lot of times people may see this, hey, that's for the tech to do and stuff, but you may work at a hospital that does not um, have techs. And also keep in mind that sometimes with certain administration of certain medications, um, or um, sometimes just um, as the role of the nurse, you're going to need to know how to take them. And so we have our vital sign, uh, vital, science machine, there we go, um, uh, here, but there may be a different look of the machine. So you can always ask a tech or a nurse on the floor when you get to your hospital about how to use their machine. But the principle is the same. Um, so I really just wanna teach you the basic principles of vital signs. Um, so our main vital signs that we need to check are blood pressure, heart rate, uh, respiratory rate, temperature, am I forgetting something? SBO2, SBO2. And pain. And That's pain. Considered a vital sign. It is considered a vital sign. So, but I can't check it on a machine. No. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. So, um, you know, I'm going to um, be checking Mrs. B's um, vital signs and kind of show you the general procedure for that. Keep in mind, your instructor may have different preferences or other things that she expects of you when you do this. All right. I don't know if it needs, oh, I think it might be able to turn on. All right, so here I have Miss B here. I turned my machine on. And so um, what I like to do, I always like to start by attaching the blood pressure because it takes um, time. So at most hospitals, they may have their own blood pressure cuff in their room. So you don't want to be you going room to room using the same blood pressure cuff and spreading germs. You want to make sure that they don't have any limb precautions. At most hospitals, that they, um, they will have a band on, sometimes it's pink or other colors that says, do not use this arm, limb precautions. And that means there's something on that side that may prevent them. Maybe they have a special IV. Maybe they have dialysis ac access. Maybe they've had a mastectomy. Um, there's lots of possible reasons, but I want to make sure there's no precautions. Also, I try to use the arm um, that does not have the IV in it to try to save my IV for the longest period of time. Um, the next step is, is I need to find my marker. And when I first started as a tech before I became a nurse, no one showed me about this marker. So I was just randomly putting it on. You always want to make sure this marker with this arrow, um, this is supposed to be going to the artery, which means I want it right about here. Like it needs, there's two, uh, what do you call it? Um, there's uh, two different places. You can kind of put it here or here, but you want to make sure that it's, um, that that arrow is going in the right place. And then I'm going to tighten this. And you want these to be tight. Now this looks like it fits Miss B pretty well. You'll definitely be able to tell when it doesn't fit. She has a longer arm. Some people have shorter arms. And so it's hard to find the right size, but you wanna make sure that it fits them appropriately. Not too small, not too big, because that could skew results. Um, before I take her blood pressure, um, you know, um, I would just let you know in general, you want to pick a good time to take blood pressure. I don't want to take blood pressure if I just stressed her out, if she just went for a five mile run, um, anything like that. And so keep in mind what just happened. If she's in a lot of pain, I need to take that into consideration. Um, so always think about right before. I want both of her feet to be on the ground. Let's see if we can see her beautiful feet. Um, we cut almost yeah. Well, <laughs> so her feet are down there, I swear. Um, so uh, what do you call it? See her feet, and I want to make sure they're not crossed. And I'm going to stop bending back and forth, so I'm not making y'all dizzy. So I want to make sure her feet are not crossed. I want to make sure that her arm is level on the table, and it's not uh, what do you call it? Uh, too far down or too far up, just straight level with her heart. Bend it. Yeah, no bending. Um, and then also I'm going to tell her, hey, I'm taking your blood pressure. Um, so try to be still and quiet for a moment um, because if she starts talking, which me and Ms. B could talk all day long, but that's not going to help her blood pressure. So please uncross your legs. <laughs> so we'll get started. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so um, I start with the blood pressure. So now it's going to take her blood pressure. And while it's doing that, I can attach something else. So this is the pulse oximeter. Um, so I like to put this on the opposite hand than when I'm doing the blood pressure that way that I can. Um, get a more accurate reading because the blood pressure can um, decrease it. So we put it on the finger. It doesn't matter what finger, but you do want to choose one that um, maybe has less or smaller fingernail if it is a female patient. Um, and you want to be, uh, what do you call it, then just watching your monitor as things are going down. Looks like her blood and, pressure. And another down. thing is that the light goes where the nail is instead of on the bottom or posterior side of the finger. So I, you do it, Ms. Woodruff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. so like that. Yes. Uh -oh. Uh -oh, I think Don't I'm get scared about my blood pressure. Yeah, I guess her blood pressure is very high. 
<laughs> she needs to stop talking while we're taking her blood pressure. I'm sorry, Miss B, that it's pumping so hard. This is the last time we'll try. And while she's doing that, to also make sure she stops talking, I would grab one of my things and put it in her mouth and say, okay, you know, and this goes all the way under the tongue, all the way to the back. I'm not going to put one in her mouth. Um, we also have the ones that go across the forehead. Just make sure you know how to use those appropriately. Um, and then um, make sure to throw them out. Remember, everyone's supposed to have their own probe cover. You're not reusing those. Make sure that there's a probe cover on it when you do it. So that was a lot of work just to get a good blood pressure. So, but we have her blood pressure here. You always wanna check your vitals and compare it. So maybe this is really low for her. So maybe I need to check with her and say, hey, what's your normal? It's showing her, um, so normal, you know, systolic, we don't look too much at the diastolic. You know, we like it to be less than 120 over 80, but we do like that systolic to be above 100. With the SpO2, you know, in nursing school, we say 95 and above, but really above 90 is great. So she's oxygenating well. And then this is showing her heart rate and that's 90 and normal is 60 to 100. While I'm doing this, I can also, without telling her, be counting her respiration. So I'll be watching how many times her chest um, is rising and falling. And I can do that um, every 15 seconds and times that by four over 30 seconds and times it by two, or I can count for a full minute. Um, once I've received all these vital signs, I want to um, put them down, uh, what do you call it, and record them so that I can later go back and, um, you know, um, follow the trends and everything with this patient. If there is anything that's abnormal, um, it is possible to check it again, but you want to wait some time in between. And you want to think about any factors that may be affecting it, making sure that it's not user error, like I didn't apply something correctly, um, you know, like maybe the probe's not on a finger, it's hanging off or something like that, or maybe it's something with the patient. Maybe they just received a medication or something changed, they just received bad news. So you always want to kind of check um, to see kind of what other factors may be present. What would you like to add, Miss B? I think you covered it, but just to um reinforce it that vital signs are very unique for the patient and you never want to say let's say there is a low heart rate in the 35 and you never want to say whoa that's super low because you know you might scare the patient this might be normal um, you always want to inquire and just ask the correct questions as, hey, what does your normal heart rate uh, ranges at home or are you um, a baseball player, runner, mm -hmm. athletic, um, just so you can ask the appropriate questions to figure out uh, why maybe the vital signs are not your typical that you learn in the book textbook uh, way. Um, and, and of course, in my practice, I've had many patients with heart rates in the 30s, and that's really normal for them. So you just be careful, okay, and not scare them or don't say anything that might be uh, not appropriate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that's so key to, um, we call it, I'm just always thinking about what you're saying in front of the patient. Um, I did have a student one semester who, uh, what do you call it, you know, the patient had um, maybe higher blood pressure. And, you know, then I asked, you know, well, what could be possibilities? And they said, because they're old. You know? So, you know, you want to always make sure that the language you're using. So most people can laugh it off and they don't take it too seriously. Okay, well, it's getting mad. Let's turn this off. Um, but, um, you know, just always be careful about the words that you're using, especially when you're new, everything's a little scary. So it may seem like there's a lot of abnormalities, but maybe it's just fine for that patient. Um, a lot of times I'm sitting there, I'm like, wow, your blood pressure is high, a little high. And then they're like, that's great for me. So, you know, just always know perspective uh, definitely changes as time goes on. Um, but yeah, so, and then consult your, you know, other help, your charge nurses and stuff as needed. If you're not sure about something, it's always good to look at trends um, about any sort of diagnostic you get, whether it's a lab, you know, like a blood sugar or a vital sign, you know, maybe they have highs or lows during the day. Maybe their medication's wearing off. Maybe it's time for pain meds, who knows? Um, but yeah, that kind of gives you the basics of vital signs. I hope this helped. We'll see you guys later. Bye.